Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HAN Network. This is our weekly program featuring everything that is coming up in the area's music, arts, and entertainment scene. We will interview local artists, authors, musicians, and even some nationally recognized names who may be performing here in our area. We will have movie reviews and film suggestions from the real dad, Mark Schumann, and etiquette tips from Catherine Michaels. This is your all-access pass, and here are your hosts. Arts and Leisure editor Sally Sanders and our entertainment reporter Steve Coulter. Welcome to Arts and Leisure on the HN Network. I'm your host Steve Coulter. I'm joined as always on the couch with my co-host Sally Sanders. A what a sleep. show we We're have. We're a little sleepy today. Uh, yeah. It was a late night. An Oscar for the ages. It ended with Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway on the stage opening an envelope that said Emma Stone Best Actress. It concluded with La La Land giving away the best picture trophy to Moonlight because there was an envelope mix-up somewhere in between that. Well, and, the, and I th to, to Warren Beatty's credit, he, he was confused. He, he jumped right he back on the stage and was he like, didn't, He didn't want to say me. it. He, he erred, he erred. Yes. He handed off to Faye Dunaway. Faye Dunaway was like, give me this. We need to end this and telecast she just, right she now. And she just saw La La Land and right. said, La La Land. Yep. And, and, and then um, all heck broke loose. Yeah. What a moment for Warren Beatty, though. He really, uh, he just welcomed himself to a 25 and under crowd that didn't know who really who he was. And now yeah. he's, he's yeah. now synonymous with the, probably the biggest gag in Oscar history. Yeah. It, it's crazy. It was sad, but it, I, it, and, and also it was interesting because everyone had predicted La La Land was going to win. So. Right. And so La La Land wins only six of 14 nominations. Yeah. They didn't even get to the halfway mark. It would have been seven if they won Best Picture. Everybody yeah. in the room had thought it was seven, and then all of a sudden, the real envelope turned up. So I guess there was a yeah a big mix-up at the firm. Uh, Price Waterhouse Cooper released a statement today, so they said that there was a an envelope problem. Uh, Clearly, there was. You usually see it in the telecast. You always see the guy with the briefcase. You didn't see it this year, so mysteriously. Well, I think they're going to have to do a little more explaining because um, absolutely. I mean, we're talking Emma about Emma Stone was holding on to her. To the, the envelope right, that said the that she actress. was back to, best actress. Mm -hmm. So cl they have more than one of each. Maybe that's just for for safety's sake. But they must have opened the wrong briefcase, pulled out for, you know for ones out the that were already yeah. done. I don't know. And then poor Faye Dunaway and yeah, Warren Beatty were stuck. They looked with it. well though for 50th anniversary yeah. of Bonnie and Clyde. Where does this rank in the craziest moments in Oscar history? Is it automatically number one? Is it ever gonna? Is something ever gonna beat this? Well, there were there were the rumors years ago when Marissa Tomei won. Right, Jack Lemmon had that, read that, her name or didn't, yeah, it Jack, wasn't on the card. Yeah, that it w that it was incorrectly yeah. done, but that turned out not to be the case. This there one was, actually was the wrong. Yeah, the wrong winner. This was the wrong card. Yeah. Um, there was the streaker when David Niven was introducing Elizabeth Taylor. Um, Mark's real dad column this week. Uh, in the papers is going to have a, a list of some of his favorites, which right. are kind of fun to read. I'm not going to share them all. And our real dad, he's disappointed that he can't be here with us because this is really an all-timer. There's, yeah. I'm sitting there on my couch. I think it was 12:10, and I'm just. You see the guy come with the earpiece, and he tells one of the producers from La La Land, and then Emma Stone tells Ryan Gosling, and it's just one of those. And moments their faces where, fall. Yeah, it's yeah. just during the headlights, and then credit to the other producer who got the mic and Jason gave it Horowitz. To, yeah, Horowitz. Yeah. He gave the award to Moonlight, and he gave a nice. You know, they're very deserving of this speech, and I guess yeah. that kind of sets us into our discussion of Moonlight being the best yeah. picture winner over La La Land. What did you think of that? storyline in itself but it was it wasn't upset it was you know it was it, an upset yeah. it was i mean they were all ha head to head um la la land moonlight and manchester by right. the sea for a very long time sure and then there was a suggestion that hidden figures might sort of might be creep the dark in there. horse um but all along moonlight is moonlight has that, always been highly regarded right. throughout the season and and it's not a, a huge surprise that they won you're talking about all the major papers that said this was the best picture of the year. It has a 99 on Metacritic. This is yeah. a, a movie that every movie critic really praised. So, and I think politically, oh it yeah, was, absolutely, it was the film to go with, and and there there was definitely politics involved in in this year's. Uh, yeah, and a historic win not only in the sense of the upset and the whole political aspect of it, but this is a movie that only cost a million dollars to make. Yeah, it's the cheapest movie ever, I think, to win Best Picture. And, and yet, it, it's beautiful. Yeah, and it was the ninth of all the nine nominees in terms of its box office draw. So it won the top prize despite the fact that 
it was such an independent movie, it was made with such a small budget and has reached such a small audience, it's still one best picture. Yeah. But all in all, I felt I found the show quite satisfactory. Absolutely. I mean, I liked the way everything was distributed. Um, everybody got something. I thought Jimmy Kimmel did a good job. I would grade the show, and I'm usually very critical, I would yeah. give it an A because of what you just said. Everybody, I would have liked to see Hell or High Water get an award. It was shut out, mm -hmm. Hidden Figures it was shut out, but the diversification of the awards, everybody got a trophy, I feel like. Uh, yeah. And that was good, Jimmy Kimmel was good, and then the ending was like, it was like the Super Bowl, Super Bowl all over again. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. a wild storyline that we'll be telling for the rest of our lives, I think. Yeah. It, it never has happened in 89 years at the Academy Awards. And it seemed like to this. move along pretty well, except for the, the tour group kind of clogging yes. up the, the middle there. Yeah, coming out with their cameras, that was definitely my, yeah. I was just th sitting at home, why are they coming out with cameras? Why can't they just enjoy being at the Academy Awards? Why do they have to take photos of themselves? And we could do without the food. Yes. I, I, I think the that, gag is, that gag yeah, is so old over. by now, between dropping it from the sky or having Girl Scouts or um, Stranger Things kids. Stranger Things yeah, kids it, distributed Enough ones. with the yeah. food. I, we understand that it's an award show and there's no food while you're sitting there. So just put little packets under their seats and yeah. if they get hungry, they do can Do something eat. else. Yeah. Uh, you, you have after parties. Just yeah. <laughs> we so, don't really care for the hunger of the Hollywood people. Just sit there for three hours. And, but yeah. I agree, the show's pace was really good. One of the things they did this year I, was they kind of coupled the awards. So it wasn't, you know, film editing. Here are the presenters walk off stage. Uh, two more presenters film you know or a sound editing sound mixing they did them together uh the screenplays were together so a lot of the awards were like two and, for and the opening was grand yes yeah, yeah it, was it was a really good show overall and uh the ending definitely elevated it to yeah. i think historic proportions i mean compared yeah. to the previous 88 shows it it's definitely generating a lot of buzz i think every office in america is talking about it and so, so we had some firsts yeah um, Damien Chazelle was the youngest director Youngest ever. director, 32 years old. Um, Emma Stone is one of the youngest best actresses, yeah. I would think, at 26. Uh, Mahershala Ali is the, the first, first uh, Islamic, Muslim. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know whether the, the foreign film, I, I, no, Farhadi's the sales, already... The Salesman might have been the first Iranian film to win Best no, Foreign I think, Language. No, I think... Second. Yeah, he had... Uh, was it him that had... And then you had they, OJ, Made yeah. in America, the documentary yeah. that's seven A 13 plus hour, yeah. yeah. it's a very long yeah. uh, documentary that won. Um, also was released by ESPN, which I think was their first victory as a company. And Amazon had two films. Right. Yeah, Manchester by the Sea, getting the Best Actor. I mean, the Best Actor Award is one major. of, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, one of the four major awards, and it went to a, a movie that Amazon funded, yeah. Yeah, and The Salesman was the other. Yeah. Who was your favorite speech? From the show. Well, I I, I loved Casey Affleck. Yeah. I I thought he was so humble and and so pleased to be included in the group. Yeah. And and he had a nice little hug with his brother too before taking yeah. the stage, which was nice. Yeah, yeah, I, that was good. And I think he he also gave appreciation for for Kenneth Lonergan, who who wrote the the screenplay right. and and directed, and won a. a an Oscar for, for the screenplay. Yeah, I was very happy to see that Kenneth Lonergan had his moment there on stage. He's well, such a writer, too. He's just yeah, like, oh, I know. Cool. You can just see him sitting in his book line study, <laughs> yeah. just scribbling away. Yeah. And I actually, my favorite speech was actually the other writer, Barry Jenkins, who did the yeah. adapted screenplay for Moonlight. I thought he had a great moment on stage. Um, I really thought his speech was phenomenal. Uh, the show really did pick up kind of pace with the we script. should we should also credit Viola Davis, who's oh, always yeah, phenomenal, yeah. Can't, and, and can't forget about her. Yeah, and and Mahershala Ali's uh, speech was was yeah. also very gracious. And, they had uh, those planned, though. They knew they were gonna. Yeah, <laughs> the, of all of all of the the winners, those were yeah. the two that you just you couldn't conceive of someone else. Sure. Well, it was good it. that it had a little upset there at the end with Moonlight because yeah. it really did go chalk with all the major awards. There wasn't. Well, I wasn't sure wasn't about Emma. Right. Well. That, Casey Affleck and Denzel were kind of neck and neck too, but yeah. it ultimately ended up going to the people that had won previously uh, at a lot of the award shows. Yeah. So Moonlight is the best picture winner from 2016. One of those weird things too that it's remarkable, you know, Mahershala Ali and Naomi Harris, who are the supporting actors who got nominated, they're not the leads though. The lead character in the film is played by three different people. Mm -hmm. Really an unprecedented uh, thing to set there. Uh, Slumdog Millionaire is the only one that I could come up with that won Best Picture with such an unknown cast, really. No, no star actor. True. Yeah, True. and you think about even last year's Best Picture winner, Spotlight, has 
six or seven big actors in it. You know, usually, usually you have a Best Picture winner that has a lot of charisma. At least Star it, power. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this one really didn't have that. Mahersha Ali is on its way to having, a, I'm sure, a great career now. But yeah. I think we're going to go, when we look back at Moonlight in five years, we're going to really think about this cast as We'll see if they go on to, to something else, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Any final thoughts before we head um, off to our second segment? Well, I, I guess I would say mm -hmm. let's bring Jimmy Kimmel back. Yeah, um, I thought he did a good job. Let's let's keep some of those comedy um, interludes. I, I, I love thought the, the Seth Rogen with Back to the Future yeah. was great, and then his little jab at uh, We Bought a Zoo at the end, or near, towards the end, was really good. Yeah. Him yeah. playing off Matt Damon, too, when they were doing the screenplay uh, announcement. That was great. Yeah. Yeah, the Matt Damon Kimmel feud, always funny. Yeah. Can't can't go wrong with that. And we could talk about the envelope thing for a while, but it's, it's done. It's it's a part of history now. And uh, 2017, it's just a wacky year. Uh, expect the unexpected. I guess is the only thing to say. You know, yeah. you don't know who's going to win what and what's going to happen at the final moment. And we saw it last night at the Academy Awards, which is usually a very you know planned out pageantry event all hell broke loose after midnight it yeah it's fun to see at the academy awards i liked it and i'll always remember this year's show it's a good year of movies later in the show we're actually going to talk about the movies that are upcoming next year but we're going to head off to a commercial break and we're going to do a little in memoriam for bill paxton who passed away on saturday have a sports injury or slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast, without an appointment. Basketball, hockey, skiing, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care, open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. We told Dad he could have his office back if he sold 150 cars last month. Deal's a deal. Well, Dad, you did it. You get your office back. Forget it. I'm having too much fun down here. My new goal, 160 cars. <laughs> wow. Folks, if you ever wanted a great price on a new Nissan, now is the time. Right now, lease a 2017 Altima 2.5S for only $99 a month. Isn't it time you got Millerized? Are you looking for new opportunity this year? How does growing a business with unlimited income potential sound? Christy Kinsman is a local entrepreneur building a global health and wellness business in Fairfield County. Offering cutting edge anti-aging skincare, all botanically based and paraben free, and a complete vegan clean eating nutritional plan, Christy's looking for business partners that can help get others healthier while taking advantage of an untapped market. Take that first step to freedom from the nine to five grind by learning more about the products and our mentorship program. Contact Christy at the Little House Shop at yahoo.com. Well, there's still a bite out on the water. Most anglers have decided to stow the gear for the winter. Just because Mother Nature isn't cooperating doesn't mean you can't see the latest models of all your favorite gear. With two convenient locations, it couldn't be easier to get your fix of summer. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien. 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, DocShop.com. Wild Birds Unlimited, your one-stop shop for all your backyard bird hobby needs. Premium bird seed, freshly delivered each week. A great selection of bird feeders, houses, a patented pole system, bird baths, and a vast array of wonderful gifts of whimsy and nature. Visit us at 356 Heights Road in Darien, next to the post office, and across from Neroten Heights Railroad Station. I am Denise Figuergoli, host of The Drive, here every Tuesday on the HN Network. It's about how you fuel your mind, your body, your spirit that creates the life you live with people, places, ideas, and organizations that move us forward mindfully and consciously. Tune into The Drive here on the HN Network, Tuesdays at 1230. We're back on Arts and Leisure on the HN Network. We're talking about a fallen legend who passed away, sadly, over the weekend, Bill Paxson. One of the most well-liked actors, yeah. too, uh, based on, on the Twitters that have come out since he died. A total oh. legend it's, as, as a supporting actor. He also had a, you know, a good career as a lead actor in TV, uh, but some of his parts are just so memorable to me, uh, for my childhood at least. Apollo 13 comes to mind. He pr plays Frank Hayes, 
or Fred Hayes, I should say, uh, with Tom Hanks and Gary Sinise. Yeah. And then he, the next year he does Twister, and then the following year he's in Titanic. He's the, the ultimate kind of adventure-seeking character. Uh, yeah. It was just, he had such a pizzazz to him, such a unique character. Did you, do you recall Weird Science from your childhood? Oh, of course, yeah. I had Weird Science on my list. Yeah. yeah. I had the John Hughes movie. Yeah, yeah. He, had, he wasn't afraid to do different things, but like he really... He's almost unrecognizable in that. I mean, he's quite a bit younger than... I know, and, it's uh, crazy. And then Terminator is where he started. Yeah. Right. Playing a punk. Yeah. So a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of sci-fi me. history in his roles uh, between the between the Terminator and then he was also <laughs> in True Lies, another James Cameron movie, and then of course, I mean, Titanic, you know, is yeah. one of the biggest movies of all time, and he b plays a very integral role being the, the person in modern day that kind of you know bridges it. Yeah, bridges between the the uh, st the storyline in 1912 and then modern day. Yeah, I, I loved his character in Titanic. I thought it was probably the best part of the movie, in my opinion. Um, yeah, he looks like a swashbuckler in that one. It's yeah, kind of fun. and then he brings back that kind of character, the adventurer, the thrill seeker in uh, 2014 film Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal. He's the cameraman again. He's chasing after, you know, the, the crime beat. Yeah. So instead of chasing the storms in Twister, he's chasing the criminals in Nightcrawler. I thought that was a great role. What were some of the things that he did that you loved? Well, I was interested. Ro Rob Lowe, uh, who I, I have come to respect, yeah. um, said that, he thought the two best films that, that Bill Paxson was in were um, One False Move and A Simple Plan. And these are both films that he did with Billy Bob Thornton. Mm. And they're, they're kind of out there um, crime stories. And one, he plays a sheriff in a little town in Arizona. And, and he's, he's trying to catch a, a gang of thieves who are um, coming from Los Angeles, I think being followed by Bill, Billy Bob Thornton. So. It's it's just interesting his range. Yeah, he's totally believable as the lawman, and yeah. then he's also totally believable as the criminal, and also just this guy who's an adrenaline junkie. He's he just was so good in so many different and, roles. And in Big Love, yeah. I mean, you, you he, look yeah, at him right. there, and he plays he's a polygamist in Big Love on HBO. Yeah, it's I'm crazy. kind of a stern, you know, right. father figure. And, Not you know, at all like his Twister character. No, you know, it's no. almost you know you can recognize him through the face, but I mean his character is totally different for yeah. sure. Yeah. And then he was also in Hatfields and McCoy. Uh, that Hatfields was on the History with, Yeah, channel. History Channel with Kevin Costner. I thought he was really good in that. Um, Tombstone. Tombstone, Yeah, right. that's another one. We, we can't uh, do a Bill Paxton segment without mentioning that. He also was in early 2000s, Vertical Limit, uh, U571. And these are just movies from my childhood. He was just in every one of these, I feel like. Every yeah. year he was in he was a never, memorable movie. He was never the guy. No. But he was always right up there yeah. with the guy. And he worked with so many good directors. Catherine yeah. Bigelow, James Cameron, you know, uh, just the list goes on and on. And he'll be deeply missed. His uh, his last movie we're going to be talking about in our third segment, yeah. we can preview it, is The Circle with Tom Hanks, where, again, he's playing a supporting character in a sci-fi movie. Yes. And yes. it's very fitting that that's uh, how he'll go out. He's also on TV in the Training Day reboot, so... TV, movies, this guy did it all. He, yeah, he was busy. Yeah, he, he was a he busy kept man. busy. He had a great IMDb page. Uh, I think I'm going to throw on Apollo 13 this weekend and pay tribute to him. I didn't wasn't able to yesterday, but it's definitely on my list of things to do. Yeah, we'll definitely miss him, and uh, he left behind He's a, a good great guy. career on the screen. When we come back, we'll talk about the movies we're looking forward to seeing uh, in the spring and later this year. On time, done right, safe. Mr. Let our satisfied customers tell it. I have called Mr. Handyman for every reason, every occasion, every broken item, every leak. They have bailed me out on many occasions, and I would recommend them to anyone. For any project, large or small. Mr. Handyman Get a fresh start to the new year by shaking up your meal routine. Walter Stewart's Market is your local source for a delicious selection of fresh and convenient salad shakers. Like Southwest Salad with Chicken, Cobb with Organic Chicken, Power Vegan with Fruit and Quinoa, Greek Salad with Tabbouleh, and Grilled Shrimp with Hominy. Grab one from our salad case or order from our deli today. Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, New Canaan, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. 
It's all about meeting goals this year, and Trinity CrossFit of Ridgefield has experienced trainers, top-of-the-line equipment, and a newly renovated space to help get you there. Offering more classes per day than any other CrossFit gyms in the area, we cater to all fitness levels. Our coaches have a combined 10 years of experience in CrossFit, and as competitors themselves, Trinity coaches can get you ready for competition in 2017. Visit our convenient location on Route 7, Danbury Road, or find out more at trinitycrossfit.com. It. Whether you're looking for the freshest seafood, the perfect steak, or want to share delicious appetizers, look no further than the Stone's Throw in Seymour. Chef Peter Hom has more than 30 years of experience creating original recipes in his American eclectic style. Our dishes are made from scratch with fresh local ingredients that pair perfectly with a seasonal craft beer, a signature cocktail, or your favorite wine. When you visit our Riverside location, you'll feel like you're on vacation when you're only a Stone's Throw from home. Visit us on Roosevelt Drive in Seymour or at stonesthrowct.com. Give your day a jump start with the latest news, sports, weather, and more on Coffee Break, live on the HAN Network, weekdays at 11 a.m. Connecticut news doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break. Welcome back to Arts and Leisure on the HN Network. We would not be doing movies justice if we weren't already going full throttle into 2017. You have to look ahead, yes. Yeah, Sayonara 2016. Academy Awards were fun, but now it's time to get serious. We're rolling back the sleeves and we're getting ready for the year of film that lies ahead. And this is the season when, when there's not a lot of good stuff out there. You've got to try hard to find entertainment, yeah. for sure. And, and also to sort of look ahead, sort of. Definitely. Get yourself cheered up because Get amped up. the list of sequels and um, it's always, reboots yep. this year seems just even worse than, <laughs> it's longer than, than, ever. than it's ever before. Yeah, terrible. But there is a good one that I saw this past weekend yeah, that's, that's getting rave reviews. Uh, Get Out is it's a horror movie with a little little dose of comedy in there. Well, Jordan Peele does yeah. it, so there's got to be some funny. Yeah, there's a final ten minutes of a movie that there's a scene that's just so funny that the whole audience was laughing and it was just like it was so per it was just like a he just dropped it in there like yeah. he just placed it in there uh well he really thought about how he was going to mix the, right. the the genres and and get the effect that he wanted yeah. he's, a, he's a very intellectual uh film director and writer i think you think about it i mean i talked about it with my girlfriend for at least a good 20 minutes after we were done watching it it's definitely not one that you're just like oh that was entertaining and enjoyable you also can have a conversation afterwards. So it's got a little bit of everything. I'd highly recommend that to people that are yeah, I was, searching for a good movie. I was a great here. fan of Key and Peele when yeah. they were on Comedy Central. And yeah, I, it's I great really to see him them. being a successful filmmaker. This was yeah. his first uh, uh, film. So it's yeah. good. And Allison Williams from Girls also making her film debut. So some TV stars are jumping Moving the other over, way. Yeah. Usually you see the movie stars are going to TV. You've got uh, the HBO show. Uh, Big Little Lies with Reese Witherspoon. It's like, why isn't she in movies? She's in TV, but now you see some TV stars going to movies. So it's it's good to see that trend, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we were talking about Bill Paxton before, and Aliens, you just wanted to throw yes, in. Yes, Aliens that is was, one <laughs> that we missed. I said True Lies, but I was yeah. Aliens is But The Circle, one. which is coming out yep. later this year, um, that has Emma Watson, Tom Hanks. It's the year and, of Emma and, Watson. And, and She's got two yeah. that, that are coming out, two big ones. Oh, yeah, Beauty and the Beast is the yep. other one, right. But um, it's it's another Tom Hanks, Dave Eggers mm -hmm. uh, combination. Now, Hologram for a King didn't do particularly well. No, it didn't well. stick for some reason. Yeah. I, I also think that it was a little clouded by the fact that he had Sully coming out, and so Sully kind of... Sucked all the Tom it, Hanks people away. Yeah, I was going to say, because I never saw Hologram for a King, but I wanted to. Yeah. And then I got a ca I caught up with Tom later in the year with Sully. But yeah, it's uh, I'm very excited for The Circle. It looks like yeah. my kind of movie. And it's always a good time of year, March, April, to have these kind of dystopian sci-fi movies. I remember V or Vendetta came out like a decade ago, and this it was like March. So it's like a good time of year to drop something like this that's a thinker. Yeah. yeah. I think The Lobster came out early last yes, year, too. Yes, it did, yeah. Yeah, yeah so this is a good time of year to find a movie that wouldn't necessarily play well later in the movie, movie year when it's more award fair. Yeah. And there's plenty of that. Uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, Daniel Day-Lewis are reconnecting this year. They're going to have a movie that comes out later this year. What's that? It's untitled right now. It's set in London in the 1950s, and he's playing a fashion designer, Daniel Day-Lewis. Interesting. Yeah. 
That's number one on my list. And Dunkirk, I mean, yeah. whenever you have Paul Thomas Anderson and you've got Christopher Nolan coming out with a movie in the same year, it's an exciting year, and Dunkirk will be the, I think, the movie that steals the summer when it comes out later on. That's going to be the blockbuster. Yeah. Uh, Nolan has not released anything since 2014 with Interstellar, so it's this is what he's been working on. This is a definitely a passion project of his, and unlike a lot of his other movies, it's based on a true event. So. Yeah, yeah. I saw some of the, the stills from that, and, and you, yeah. you see them on the beaches of Normandy trying to get out of there. It's amazingly and, yeah. shot, for sure. Yeah. Could be one that contends for awards later on in the year, too, not just yeah. a big blockbuster. Well, here's one I don't think it'll probably contend for awards, but I bet it's going to be popular. The Shack. Oh, yeah. Based on a really popular novel. I read the novel. book. I loved the book. I, I, I read the book, and I, I loved the book, too. And I it's, personally don't like Sam Worthington, though, and I oh. thought I'd cast at him. I. Really? Two steps backward on the excitement train. Well, Octavia Spencer's in it, though. Yes, so. she plays... Uh, the angel. Right, exactly. Yeah. That one comes Not out... Not to give too much that away. That one comes out March 10th, right? Yeah. Two weeks from now. Very soon. That's a very a big one. Logan comes out on Friday. That uh, one's going to... And that's the last of, of yeah. Patrick Stewart as... Hugh uh, Jackman and Patrick Stewart teaming up one last time. It's going to be a big year for Hugh Jackman, too. He's got the P.T. Uh, P. Barnum uh, biopic coming out later this year. Well, that should be popular locally. Yeah, it's going to be a it's going to be a good one. The Greatest Showman is the name of that one. So wow, it's not the March slate is good. Logan, I think, is going to be good. The Beauty and the Beast remake, Life with Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds. I mean, talk about star power, sci-fi thinking. Yeah, that looks really good. The preview definitely has uh, me interested. What are some of the other ones you're looking forward well, to? Well, I had to, um, King Arthur, The oh, Legend yeah. of the Sword. That's um, Who's in that? Is that Guy Ritchie who's directing it or no? Yeah, Guy Ritchie's directing it. Charlie Hunnam and um, Jude Law are in right. it. Right. And it, it just looks good. Yeah. I mean, it has a nice look to it. I'll go so. see anything with Jude Law after The Young Pope. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, oh, that's right. Um, and there's one that just came out on, on Netflix I wanted to mention because it won the Grand Jury Prize um, at, at Sundance right. last month. Mm -hmm. um, it's called I Don't Feel at Home in This World Anymore, which is a folk song title. Um, Starring Melanie Linsky and Elijah Wood. Who oh, great. Elijah Wood is always yeah. That's a nice little duo. But it's it's a very kind of um, depressive story about someone whose whose um, world is invaded by burglars, and she decides to go because the police won't do anything. She decides to go after them, and it's. And does he play a police guy or no? No, no, he plays kind of. They they described him as kind of a Dwight Schrute character oh. you know he's he's going to help punish the people and, okay and apparently it turns really coen brothers gruesome nice which is but it's funny in a very depressing kind of Colin, way if you color can, me <laughs> interested coen yeah. brothers but that's on netflix so yeah. you can catch that now i was gonna say that's that's a good one to watch this weekend yeah i've got a couple other ones uh, okay felt is coming out later it's a biopic based on the guy who played or was deep throat oh. yeah and the liam neeson is playing felt mark felt Oh, perfect. So that one I can be, just see him lurking around yeah, a parking I was garage. Say, that's definitely uh, got that, some Academy Award buzz, I think, later in the year. Yeah. Uh, Catherine Bigelow has a picture coming out. Uh, we were just talking about her with Bill Paxson earlier, one of our best directors, I think. Uh, the only female uh, director to win Best Director. It's about D uh, Detroit 1967 and the riots. So that should be, I think, an amazing oh, film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Who's in it? Do you know? John Krasinski is actually the lead. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting casting choice, but I trust He's Catherine a good Bigelow. actor. I, yeah, I He's think so. He's a good actor. What, are, what else are you looking forward to? Um, the Zookeeper's Wife, Jessica Chastain. Yeah. Chastain. Yeah, um, she was funny on the Celebrity Mean Tweets last night at the Yes, she show. was. That was, no, that was. See, that was another good yeah. little bit they did. Um, the Zookeeper's Wife is set in, in Poland uh, near Warsaw in, right. in 1938 when the it's Nazis invade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And... and um, Basically, it's it's one of those heroic uh, saving the Jews from the Warsaw Ghetto. Right. Um, true story. It looks like it. Oh, it be looks great. Yeah. I think yeah. it's coming out in April, right? I think that's right. Yeah. The Glass Castle is another book remake. Uh, Brie Larson, Naomi Watts. I think that that could be a real uh, best picture contender next year. Have you ever read the the Glass Castle? No. Jeanette no. Walls. No. Oh, nope. that's a good one. Yeah, that should be a, a good movie. Uh, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri is the latest Martin McDonough movie. Really? He did Seven Psychopaths and In Bruges, which are two of my favorites. Uh -huh. I'm very excited for that one. That one comes out later this year. 
Well, <laughs> one that's coming out on Mother's Day that I think I, I would not recommend is um, Snatched. It's Amy oh, it's Schumer Goldie and Hawn, Goldie yeah. Hawn. Yeah. Um, it sounds just At least really it's original. It's not a, a remake. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. It just sounds quite tacky. Yeah. Well, quite tacky. There's plenty of, uh, you know, superhero but, movies or Baywatch reboots, you know, stuff well, like that. Well, I mean, I was just looking. Here, here, reboots and sequels. Jumanji, Baywatch. Kingsmen are back with yep. something. Um, the Mummy, Transformers 5. Um, you mean Transformers 15? Yes. Pirates of the Caribbean, I know there's another one coming out. There's a spinoff of 10 Cloverfield Lane, Beauty and the Beast, The Fat, the Fate of the Furious, yep. Kong, Skull Island. Oh, Kong, Skull Island is coming out next month, yeah, with yep. Brie, Brie Larson, yeah. Blade Runner tw 2049. That one I'm very excited for. Uh, that's Ryan Gosling. Yeah. Maybe he can get an Oscar next year. Denis Villeneuve, who lost right. last night Best Director, he's, he's directing. I got another one, too. The life, uh, the death and life of John F. Donovan, Natalie Portman, Jessica Chastain, coming out later this year. Oh. Two of our better actresses, I think, going head-to-head. -head. Could be a good one. What's it about, do you know? I don't. I just wrote it down. I saw, I saw that Natalie, that was Natalie Portman's post-Jackie project. And okay. I, I had to circle it after... Uh, she wasn't there last night at the Academy Awards, so she wasn't really talked about. But I love Natalie Portman. I love Jackie, so I had to had to mention it. Does Meryl Streep have anything coming out? Not that I know of. Yeah, Darren, I didn't, I didn't Darren Aronofsky know. is also directing Mother. That was other one on my list, and Alexander Payne is in a movie Downsizing. Ooh. So yeah, you got some really good filmmakers. I think that are busy. Bigelow, Aronofsky. These are some some serious uh, titans of the industry. Paul Thomas Anderson too. Yeah. So we have some things to look forward to. It's not all I'm bleak. Very, I'm very, very excited. Wonderstruck, Todd Haynes' new movie is coming out. That's starring Michelle Williams and Julianne Moore. Ah. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of good ones. I mean, the list Does goes Todd on Does Todd Haynes on. ever do a movie without Julianne Moore? It seems like it's she's in a It's been a lot. while since he's done one, yeah. And then the other one, it's Battle of the Sexes. Is That's Emma Stone and uh, Steve Carell. They're playing Bobby Riggs. and. Hoo -hoo. Yeah, there's the image right there. That should be fun. Yeah. Well, she she makes a good uh, Billie Jean King. Yeah, she does. Spot on. Anyways, that concludes our third segment. We're very excited for the year in film yeah. ahead. Uh, Sally, thank you again, of course, for joining me and talking to Oscars and everything about movies. We'll be back in two weeks on the couch. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you in two weeks.